nothing about my service, because after that, when he started talking, you sounded like me. And I can hear him then, but prior to that, it was bam, 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 boom, boom, boom. Y'all was breaking buttons and running up and down the aisle and everything. And where is that in the New Testament? And then all of a sudden, this new conversation got serious. And then he looked at me, and how do you know all that? Because I used to be there. Oh, see, you thought you was talking to some preacher that don't know what he's talking about. See, I can tell you what we did. And then the conversation got serious. See? And I couldn't find it in the Bible. I said, so, so take your Bible out and show me. And he couldn't do it. And then all of a sudden, he didn't want to talk about instrumental music and things like that anymore. Of course not. Because it's not in there. It's not in there. So don't let people make you feel bad when you finally get in there. And they leave with some questions. You notice that they didn't ask the question while they were here. They got you trapped going down the hallway in the parking lot when they got home somewhere. And then they tried to come off with some stuff. They didn't make any sense, but you couldn't do it. Because God didn't authorize Christians to use instrumental music. And if God didn't authorize it, God doesn't recognize it. In vain do they worship me, preaching the commandments, the doctrine of men. And I'm going to wear that out to the day I die. That's what Jesus said they were doing. And we do that today. We give God our form of worship. Because that makes us feel good. Some guy will come in Sunday with a guitar and an amplifier. Another guy will come in with a bass. Another guy said, well, you know, I'm going to bring my drum. Another guy will come in with a acoustic guitar. Somebody will come in with a violin. Y'all look around, you got a full-fledged orchestra on Sunday morning in some of these churches. Mm -hmm. And you have to wait until they stop before you can hear a portion of God's word. And then when the word comes, it's the story. It might as well be because music is. And then everybody is having a good time. But I thought we was here to worship God, not be worshipped. I thought on the first day of the week, we came together to give praise to the Father. So if that is the fact, and that is the fact, don't you know that he wants to hear what he wants to hear? And it's not based on your definition or my definition. It's based on this. And that is not going to change. Generations from now, if Jesus tarry, that is not going to change on the first day of the week. Amen. So you can go ahead and let people make you feel bad. I'm going to make them feel worse about the facts. Yeah. Because I'm not going to let you make me feel as though I'm missing something in worship when I'm doing what God said to do. Amen. Now, we just, we just experienced that. <coughs> and this is the tail end of what your brothers and sisters did thousand, but over 2,000 years ago. They prayed. They broke bread. They gave and helped one another out. And then prophetically, they heard God's word. Amen. And by the time John died in the turn of the century, Genesis, the revelation was completed. So they passed this around all over the place. Yes. And don't you know, it went to all the churches the same way. Why do we change these things in 2012? And who gave us the authority to do that? So when people tell you that, you fight back. So let's fight back this morning. Because I tried before I left to prove the church Christ minister wrong. I tried. But it didn't work because he was smarter than I was. Matthew 26, 30 and Mark 14, 26 is the words of Jesus, but according to Hebrew 8, 7 through 13 and Romans 7 through 1 through 7, that was the old dispensation. Okay? But Jesus didn't say anything about musical instruments. Alright? Now, turn to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. And we just we just walk our way down through scripture. Because remember, brothers and sisters, this is all we have. We don't have nothing else. Okay, so we don't have no other books. All the other books are out there, but this is the only book that is inspired. Okay? Only book. Matthew 16. Turn to uh, verse 24. Because I know even some people want to, they want to go over brothers and sisters' house and they want to pull out some musical instruments. And you know in fellowship you can't even find it. You can't find Christians do that. It's, it, the guide is the only thing you have is right in front of you. So if you start violating scriptures, you're violating God's word. Okay? 
Starting in 24, uh, 24 verses, having received such a charge, he put them into prison and fastened their feet to stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas was praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to him. Now, I know that he was singing songs and spiritual songs, but this is a good song to sing while you're in jail. Lift him up, page 631. And when they arrested me, I was singing 791 on bending knee. I start singing um, uh, 885, how beautiful heaven must be. I was in the jail cell with 33 known criminals. I was the only innocent one there. So brother Stan, how you know that? Because each one of them told the truth until they got upstairs and faced the judge saw and each one of them but me knew Judge Sullivan. I had no reason to know Judge Sullivan. Because I was in there falsely accused. But it had, took all day for me to prove that. And so I was coming and then I started speaking some of these songs. Some of the guys looked at me like I was crazy. And I'm saying to myself, you think I'm crazy? I know y'all crazy. I don't belong in here. And then when every one of them got upstairs in the courtroom, every one of them lied. They lied. And, and, and don't tell me crime don't pay. Because mama, brother, sister, girlfriend, wife was sitting in the corner with the bad crime. Ready to go to the clerk. $50,000 bail here, $20,000 bail here, $15,000 bail here. I counted up in the five hours that we was upstairs, I counted up $100,000 for the court system. So don't tell me crime don't pay. Crime pays a lot. And criminals have money. Because they don't pay taxes. <laughs> they don't pay taxes. But but look at look at especially with the faith and praise. Look at look at some of the, and, and Brother Keller brought this out. Each one of these have a, a scripture to them. And the scripture is to God. That's where it should be. But we're gonna see as we read some of these passages here that we are to teach and admonish one another. Mm -hmm. Now, if you come out of the era that I came out of, you had Motown, the Beatles, and all that, mm -hmm. every time those songs came on, it made you feel good. Mm -hmm. it made you feel good. When you hear a good gospel song, don't it make you feel good? Mm -hmm. You start thinking about over yonder, over the Jordan. You want to go be with God. That's exactly what God wants you to do when you sing it to Him, is to want to be with Him. Because when you sing them worldly songs, then you want to be with Mama. You wanted to be with your girlfriend or your wife. It's all right if y'all say amen. It's okay. We ain't going no further than that with that today. But it just, it, those kind of songs always made you feel good. Gospel songs do the same thing. It makes you feel good about the one you love, and that's God. And that's exactly what God wants you to do because he's done so much for you. He wants you to sing about him. He wants you to feel good about him. He wants you to be admonished because there are some things during the week we don't need to be doing. So when we come and sing or put on a gospel song, it helps us get regrouped. It really do, and that's exactly what the song should do. But how can a musical instrument do that for you when it wasn't commanded to do it for you in the first place? How? And why do you want to change things when it has already been instituted by God? Don't you know you got to deal with God when you make changes in this house? Ask the devil about it. Mm -hmm. Ask them. And they ran in there with strange fire. Because in the Leviticus it said, don't put strange incense on my fire. On my altar. So when they ran in there and did what they want to do, what happened? Zach? Zach? You can't change things with God. God doesn't like changes, y'all. It irritates him. When you bring in a big old bull, gold bull for worship, and you start bowing down to it, that irritates God. Mm -hmm. When you start bringing your idols and telling God he got to be second to your idols, that irritates God. So when God tells you what to do, he expects you to do it. That's why when uh, Brother Charles and Brother Brundage get up here and lead us in song, they got to lead us in spiritual songs. Yes, and a lot of you don't sing. You're violating God's word when you don't sing. You're not participating. You're not admonishing and being admonished. You're just there and you're somewhere else. You didn't think I was going to say that, huh? If you want a better song service, everybody got to sing. Now, I know some of you are not singers. I realize that. 
Some of us can't hold a note, but that's by our own definition, not God. Amen. God has given you a voice to sing. He wants to hear it when he is being worshipped. Because it makes him feel good, not you. So you can sing out of turn eventually, Brother Charles and Brother Brunnage is going to tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, give me some. So they're going to help you with learning how to pitch and learning how to sing. Don't be offended because you want to sing better. Because you want to sing better to God. Amen. And have that kind of attitude when you're in the church of Christ. Know that these songs are designed for us to bring them up to God. And let no one steal your joy. Don't let nobody come in here and tell you you need a drum. <coughs> you need a tambourine. Because guess what, brothers and sisters, at the Bridgeport Church of Christ, that ain't never happened. So you're going to let people come in here and think they're going to roll something in here. They're going to get rolled out of here with that instrument. Because we're not letting nobody roll in here. So my, I know what a tambourine looks like. It jingles when you carry it. So when you come in here thinking you're going to be going like this here, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. You come in here, I know what a guitar looks like, and I know what an amplifier looks like. Mm -hmm. You come in here with your cord, getting ready to plug it in, I'm going to unplug it. We're not doing what they do. We're going to do what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. And we're going to justify it by scripture. Because we don't want to vainly worship God. Because that is strange noise to God's ear. Yeah. Because he didn't authorize it. That's right. So when you go to those churches, probably doing, um, um, probably when you got to go to your family reunion. On Sunday morning, the whole family pick where you're going to worship. <laughs> I didn't see y'all laughing because y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, if you're a member of the Church of Christ, you know you ain't going to that church on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to argue with your cousins, your great aunts, and all that. You're going to go, well, I don't know, maybe some of y'all do go. Maybe <laughs> yeah, y'all go because y'all chuckle. So when you go to the service, the family service, and y'all go in, and you see those instruments and everything, and they start playing those instruments and the song, you start singing. You know you feel very uncomfortable because that's not how you sing at worship time at home. Mm -hmm. My thing is, just don't go. Just don't go. Because you're going to be the only one there feeling uncomfortable because that's the way they do things. That's right. And then you be like me and my brother get yelled at after service when you come in one door and they come in another door and you the only one coming in the door and the whole family coming in the door and they jump on you and ask you where you've been just tell them you've been to church o'clock <laughs> and they're going to know what you're talking about especially if you're down south and uh, they're going to start asking you some questions or saying some things to you just say I had to worship my God today and leave it in that leave it in that but if you want to partake in that stuff remember God is listening mm -hmm. and something he has not authorized Okay, right. turn to uh, Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. Now, Wednesday, I want you to bring your questions. I want you to bring your questions. Come on, Wednesday. Wednesday and I got some questions <coughs> that you all uh, that we can study, that we want to study. Romans 15, 8 and 9. 8 and 9. Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to conform, to confirm the promises made to the Father. And that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy as it is written. For this reason I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. Now you're not going to find an instrument of music in you. You're not, you're not going to find an instrument. You're just not. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 18. We'll read down to 20. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dispensation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in the hearts of the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look, you're not going to find it. Now, there's no part for God to tell you to bring an instrument as it is to tell you what to do and to sing from your heart. Don't think God got the problem. If God wanted you to bring the companies to you, to your, your uh, uh, physical, vocal singing, he would have said it. God is not afraid of you. He's not. 
He's telling you what he wants you to do, and then he's telling you why he wants you to do it so you can be obedient to it. So you can be obedient, obedient to it. A lot of us coming here on Sunday morning, we are totally detached from God. We are. We got the world on our mind. We got medical illnesses on our mind. We got problems on our mind. We got jobs on our mind. So many things are on our mind. But when we come in here, and Church of Christ got the shortest service I've ever seen. I mean, we, we really time oriented. We up and out of here by now. Y'all complain about me being a 45 minute preacher, but for the most part, we 20 minutes, half an hour, you're shaking hands, kissing one another, and you're in the parking lot. Now, you mean to tell me you can't give God what he wants in the way he wanted for a half an hour? Mm -hmm. But you will go to these rock concerts and come home with your ears ringing. You would stay up all night long with musical things on the outside that make you feel good, and I love them too. And I love them too, but when we come here, we got an issue with the way we're supposed to sing. God doesn't have an issue with that. God expects us to give of him what he wants. And he don't want to argue about it. God didn't argue with people about things. He just told them what to do. If they didn't do it, okay, fine. This is what I'm going to do if you don't do what I'm asking you to do. Mm -hmm. Zach? Because it's God who we're dealing with. And when the brother read, Brother Stanley read this morning about the wrath and the anger of God, that's what God wants us to see that he don't want to show us on Judgment Day. And that's what Satan knows. There's a lot of things that we do in worship or start <coughs> that irritates God when we abandon the principle. If he didn't command it, we shouldn't be doing it. And we should feel good about doing it when we do it. And don't let other people steal your joy. What if these people out outside this room tell you that you're boring? Don't let them do that to you. Because the only thing you got to do is tell them, I'll do anything God wants me to do if I find it in here. If God said it, I'll do it. And I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. Because when I was sitting there, I mean, like I said, I, I, I told you, some of you guys know that. So what, me and I went to the Sunday school convention up in New York. And it was in this, uh, in this uh, gymnasium. <clears throat> and all these top-notch Pentecostal ministers were there, and all these churches were there. And they started getting things warmed up. And I noticed that the atmosphere was changing. And so I'm looking at Donna, and I'm saying to myself, they get ready to turn loose in a minute. <laughs> and because the tempo of the music started getting faster. Yeah. And you know the Holy Ghost is coming. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is going to fall on somebody. Yeah. All right. Obviously, it didn't fall on me. All right. He knew who to fall on. And so, you know, we had we had those metal chairs in the audience. And so, zan, zan. And I think the zan, the, the type of pitch or the note that they was hitting, gave people that urge to do something. And, and left side of the, the auditorium started doing something. The rear started doing something. And I'm waiting because something is starting to happen right where we are. And, and you know, I'm giving people room because, you know, the music came the Holy Ghost. And, and once the Holy Ghost come in, he, he just he just do what he wants to do. I couldn't find that in Corinthians where it says that the gifts are subject to the one that is given to you. So when people start telling you they can't help themselves when the Holy Spirit come upon them, that's not what Paul told the Corinthians. Matter of fact, Paul told the Corinthians, stop the foolishness. Yes. So, you know, I'm backing up because I'm like the sons of Skeeva. I don't want stuff to jump on me that I can't get off of me. Okay, because I know I'm in a place where I don't supposed to be because I'm, I'm the only one, me and Donnie, the only one, and I'm looking at Donnie every now and then to see if everything is all right. Mm-hmm.
to worship because if he leave it up to us, we're going to give him anything. Yes. We're going to give him anything. And who are you to say that brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so can't get up and do what they want to do? You see? Proof is in Corinthians. Because the same thing happened up there in New London, New London and I felt the same way. Now, Sister Stanley can tell you her version later on. <laughs> but I knew something was wrong. And so when it was all over, I said to Jimmy, and he said to me before I said it to him, you felt kind of funny, huh? I said, yeah, I felt funny. What was going on? He said, that's the Holy Spirit. I said, what Holy Spirit? I didn't read that. When it fell on Jesus, I didn't see Jesus sweating and busting the buttons and everything. I, I, didn't see, I didn't see him losing his sandals and stuff. And, and you know, and you know, I said it's serious. I said, because y'all laughing now, I said it's serious because it was a serious moment for me. I am trying to define what spirit he's talking about. If James told me to do that, right? Try the spirit by the spirit to see if it's of God. Now, That's I right. a different kind of spirit going on. Mm -hmm. I want to find it. So crazy as I am, I did it. I said, I got to have this spirit. Mm-hmm. But they got on that pillow. They locked their doors and locked the windows. I'm tearing for the Holy Spirit because they told me to tear for the Spirit. Now I'm looking for the Spirit to come through and land on my shoulder with tongues of fire. He never did. I got hungry. I got tired and my knees started hurting. Mm -hmm. I said, I got to go. And I'm looking around and all these people are crying. God wants his worship the way he wants his worship. Yes. Not the way you and I want to give it to him. And I knew something was wrong. I knew something was wrong. So I got up. Jimmy said, where you going? I said, hey, he said, door's locked. I said, you're going to lock it. I'm hungry. I'm getting out of here. Obviously, the spirit ain't coming. If he did, he ain't coming for me. There's another mm -hmm. moment I had that the spirit wasn't coming for me. So I knew then I had to get out of here. Mm -hmm. I knew I had to get out of here. And y'all know how it is when a man is hungry. Mm -hmm. Don't say no more. <laughs> and what I'm trying to do, because he was a dear friend, I worked with him every night in Sikorsky. I'm trying to find out what you think. That's all I'm trying to find. Yes. So when I come to church, I just want church, y'all. I don't want foolishness. So y'all start topping up in here. I know what that is. Y'all start shaking something in here. I know what that is. You got to leave because I know what that feels like. And that's why the commandment comes from God. Amen. And I just, I tell you all the time, if you don't believe me, just go, go to Stratford Avenue. Yeah. Go over the bridge. Bear right after the right. One, two, three, four flight. And on the left, on the right, I think it's like 22 churches, like a five or six box thing. Go in one. And you will hear them when you get out the car. Hmm. You can see them run by the window. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You see them run. And then when you get in there, open up your Bible. Don't go in there without opening this up. And then you look at them, and then you look at what it said, and then you see whether or not you're going to stay there or not. That's all you have to do. Stop. And then for some of y'all who still, and I'm really on the same page with the sermon this morning, Stop. Stop. remember, what God has authorized, he recognizes. Don't you recognize people in your house? Not all y'all are saying yes. <laughs> you know who you invite. If you walk into your home and you see a whole bunch of people that you didn't invite, you would have talked to the people there in your home and you would have said, who are these people? <laughs> and they better give you an answer. If they're young people, you're going to go to the young people in your home. If they're all women, you're going to go to your wife. Mm -hmm. Oh, honey, I forgot to tell you, I didn't invite some folks over. You ain't going to know them. Don't you know God knows who worships him <coughs> and where he wants to be worshipped mm -hmm. based on how he told them to worship him? Yes. If you abandon that, you are vainly worshipping God. And instrumental music is just one of the ways you can vainly worship God. You can get in here and tell somebody something that's not in here. That's mainly worshiping God. Mm -hmm. But if that's what you want, then go get it. Mm -hmm. Then go get it. I love it when I hear ministers talk about, I'm going to mention a brother, but he said, you know, 
young people are starting getting charismatic in here. They want instrumental music. What do you think? Handle that before the next Lord's Day. It don't take that long. Because they're itching to do something. I said pretty soon they're going to come in there with something. So you might as well handle it now. Have a meeting yeah. during the week in between the Lord's Day because they make their decision. And don't you know they made their decision? And don't you know the next Lord's Day they rented a place and went and worshipped themselves? But you know what the tragedy was? They kept our Father's name outside on the door. Church of Christ. Mm -mm, that's not the Church of Christ. That's the Church of you are mounting something down something street with ABC behind it. But that's not the Church of Christ. That has become something else. See? But let them go. Let them go. Peter said in 1 Peter that in a great house, there are vessels of gold and silver and also of wood and clay for dishonor. You be the first, not the last. There's some of you that's just not going to get it when it comes down to worship. Just not. Because the devil has gotten into your heart and blinded you. So you're going to start saying things that you shouldn't say, and when it's heard, you're going to be rebuked. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to get mad, and then you're going to leave. But we're going to pray for you. You notice I say you're going to get mad, and you're going to leave. Mm -hmm. We ain't fellowshipping together. Because we have to fellowship God in spirit <coughs> and in truth. Mm -hmm. So if you want instrumental music in your worship, find you a worship that's going to give you instrumental music. Mm -hmm. well, I'm saying that's pretty bold. Either you go or I go. But I ain't coming here sitting down with people who want to do something contrary to God's word. Mm -hmm. Just not going to do it. Because Jesus may come back that Sunday when we all in here being divided. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to go like this. Oops. Not my father's house. And then we all going to stand before God. You remember those letters that went to the churches in Asia? Mm -hmm. I have something against you. Yes. Because you left your first love? Yes. That's not going to be us. That's not going to be us. You got to see these things. You got to see these things. Um, turn to James chapter 5. James chapter 5. And, and, and please come. Come. Come Wednesday. Verse 13. Come Wednesday. I'm going to wrap it up. If any one among you suffering, let him pray. If anyone's cheerful, let him sing a song. Let him sing a song. Find a gospel song and sing. Mm -hmm. Don't you know the majority of those songs that David wrote was accompanied with instruments? God didn't authorize him to use it, us to use that. I mean, didn't authorize us to use that when we sing it. And you'll say, you're going to say it because so many people say it. I can't find in the scriptures, Ellis, where, because you don't call your brother Ellis, then it's just Ellis. You know, I can't find in the scripture where God told me, us not to use this instrument. The fact that God said what to do exclude what he didn't say. Mm -hmm. He already said what to do. Man. And so far, we haven't found any instruments added to what he said what to do. Amen. See, there's the argument. Mm -hmm. There's the argument. Now, if you still want to be persistent, we're just going to have to make you look bad. Because there's no scriptures to support that. And remember, the burden of proof is not on us. It's on you who wants to make the change. Amen? Mm -hmm. You want to make the change. So you find the scriptures that support you making the change. Mm -hmm. Fair enough? And you're not going to find it. I never forget the very first time we went to Trump, me and not. Donna carried us. Walked in, snow was falling outside. Went in. And I'm looking. I'm looking for the fire to grow. In the church, we got the fire sitting over here. Usually up front. In some of the bigger churches, you're the choir in the back of the ministry. Like you see on TV, he gets up and he goes like this here. That gives him a little thing. Once he starts putting his hands like this, choir get up. And then the choir starts going like this here. And you need the choir director. 
Yes. If you start singing, and then y'all stand up too. Some of you stand up and start doing the windshield wiper thing. Get <laughs> <laughs> you your praise on now. Get your praise on. And now, you know, you, you got the brothers over there, over there with the, with the instruments. And now you just got a full pledge service going on. Everybody's sweating. People losing buttons. Pieces are falling off. Bowls are coming out. You, you doing your thing. Doing your thing. At some point, not everybody, because somebody's sitting here going like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'd be me. Uh, and you're asking yourself, why I don't feel like this? Because Brother Mark 10 is not about how you feel. It's about how he feels with what is being given to him. Mm -hmm. And if every time I turn around on my day, on my day, you come and bring me something that you know I, I haven't want. told you to bring me, mm -hmm. at some point, I'm going to get irritated. Mm -hmm. Now, you have a birthday every year. Now, there are some things that you don't like. If Pop mocked him, brought you something that you hate on your birthday, you're not going to like it. Out of respect, you're going to say you that. Thanks. Now, seven birthdays, you're going to get some age on it. And once you get over 21, you're going to really think you're paying your taxes and everything. <laughs> you're going to say to your dad, dad, I don't want that. God's the same way. You bring him something that he doesn't want, he's going to tell you, I don't want that. Because that, that doesn't make me feel good. You know what Moses said to his brother when his two nephews and his brother's two sons dropped in? Those who come near to God must give him the respect mm -hmm. that he deserves. That's right. And they must reverence him as holy. That's all Moses said to him. Aaron had two more sons. Now I see why he had four boys. Because <laughs> God already knew he was going to take two of them. Already knew he was going to take two of them. And that's all Moses said to him. He must be revealed as holy. And that's it. You know what? Aaron didn't say anything. Later on in the chapter, Aaron kind of like voiced some things about, you know, I know what I got to do. And you can read the story. But he didn't get mad because he knew that it was wrong. And in his lifetime, he had seen what God has done. Aaron was there. Aaron was there. Matter of fact, he, he shook the bull. Yes, he did. He made the bull. And because of Moses' prayers, he didn't drop dead. So he already knows in worship what God wants and what God don't want. He already knows in worship when you give him something he don't want, he's going to take you out. He didn't have to say anything because he already knew God. Mm -hmm. He lost two sons because he lost some countrymen. Mm -hmm. He knew. Well, Brother Stanley, why did not doing that today? You're spiritually dead today. What did Jesus say to the Pharisees? You walk in tombstone. So, when it's time to talk to these people, and these are the questions I, I wrote that we could talk about on Wednesday. I hope all y'all come, because y'all can give these people the answers. But the Bible nowhere commands not to use musical instruments. We're going to get on tap of that. Did not God's people use instruments in the Old Testament? We're going to tackle that. Because remember, there's two testaments, the Old and the New. You can't, can't take old uh, new wine and pour it in an old wine stand. Does not the New Testament book reveal contains references to uh, instrumental music? That's another one, people. Are not musical instruments accompanied by songs if you are using Ephesians 5, 18, 20, and Colossians 3, 16? That's another one they combat you with. Could musical instruments be considered an aid instead of an addition? That's another one. And you bring your question. <coughs> Because I, I, you know, with some of you, maybe the sermon hasn't helped you to come to a definite conclusion that we don't need to do that. And you just know you're not going to do it. Well, really That's all it is. You don't know spiritually whether or not you shouldn't do it. You may still have that question lingering in your head. 
But see, I don't have that issue. And I love music. I took piano lessons. I love music. I love jazz. I love country. I love anything that makes sense. It, I do. I love rap if it makes sense. <laughs> One of my favorite rappers was the heavy D. So I love rap too if it makes sense. If it's not derogatory, if it's not downgrading women, and all those things. But I'm not bringing in that fellowship. No. <laughs> I'm not bringing the fellowship. I'm not bringing over. You also maybe have a bridge and pork chops and shrimp. You know, we'll never have any picnic. But I'm just trying to give you a clue on what we should start having. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bringing that to you. Because I have no scriptural basis here. <clears throat> when we come to worship, I'm not bringing my iPod in here. I'm not. Because I'm not tuning God out. Because this is what I want. Because I'm afraid he's going to come through and see on what I like him for. As he has done in the past. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to irritate God. If I don't give God what he wants on Sunday morning, I won't come. I won't come. Because he's not going to change the rules. So just think about it. Just think about it. And as you study these things for the next couple of days, just earnestly bring your question. And, and say, Brother Stanley, I got some questions too. And let's try to find instrumental music. This way, on the next Lord's Day, you can come in here like I come in here. Ready to hear Brother Brother did, because he's on this month. Ready to hear him without any interference. And ready to sing. Sing. Sing, brothers and sisters, sing. Don't come here and not sing, because you're supposed to sing. And why are we being amongst? So we don't be like the world. <coughs> so we be like the world. Did you have a tough time this week? I had a tough time this week. I worked hard this week and I've never worked since I've been back off my hands. I worked hard this week. I had a tough time. I came home late every time. And I got to talk to him about that on Monday. It was a tough week. So when I get to my worship, I want to give God all that he wants. And I want to give it to him the way he wants it because I want to feel good. I want to feel good because he's feeling good. So when I leave out of here, I'm good. I'm going to leave out here and not be good. Why did you come to worship if you're going to leave out here not being good in my side of God? Because guess what? Three o'clock. The clouds can roll back. Amen. The trumpet can sound. He can be announced. And when he come back, he's coming for one ride. Not me. Mm -hmm. God is not telling Jesus to come back with all these churches. He's telling him to come back for one. That's right. You and I better be in the right church. Because Jesus is not going to bring all wives to us. Because he's not going to do what God I hope I've said something to you that helped you this morning. It got you to, you know, at least examine this. And, and you don't have to wait till Wednesday. Call me up, email me, come over to the house. Come over to the house with your questions. They brother stand behind a minute. I know it ain't gonna take a minute. But come on over and let's talk about it. And let's see what they're doing. Because from, from time to time what I do, I go on the church channel and I peep at it. I peep at it. And I, I've seen them. I go like this with y'all standing. And I see what's in the background. And I see them chairs. I see those instruments, and then I go like this. <coughs> then I wait until the end, and he's getting ready to tell you how to be saved. And I take my good ears, because this will be a little wearing out on me. And I go like this to see if he's going to say anything about a person. He just believes. Just believes. That's all he says. Just believes. Then I go, I turn it up to the care of Harry. Harry's got an exception. When he got the road, he's going to do shit like that. And I'm listening. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see just come on up and say the sinner's prayer. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Yes. And, and I hear those multi-million dollar multi evangelists tell you from somewhere way down to somewhere. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is come and touch them. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting. It's 2012. Maybe I'm wrong. I've been in church probably all the time. Yes. So let me see. Let me see if I'm wrong. Maybe they changed some things. And, and I see what they say. I see that they still saying, send in your contribution. 
Yeah. And we'll send you back a blessing. Mm -hmm. Still haven't figured out how the blessing is coming through the mail, but they're going to send you a blessing. <laughs> the money will be proof that they're sending you the blessing. Yeah. And you'll get a handkerchief, you'll get a certificate, you'll get something that is your blessing. Yeah. Okay, and I'm listening. I'm listening to see if anything new coming out. Mm -hmm. and, and see, some of y'all don't like me to do this. You don't like me to say these things. You know why? Because you still believe they're Christians. Mm -hmm. See? And the reason why you believe they're Christians is because you haven't asked them to define who they are. Mm -hmm. See? That's what it is. And now you're mad at God and you're mad at, expose, at a spokesman because he's revealing these things. Yes. Well, I didn't see that. I don't think that's the nature of Christ. You missed his debates. How many times did he call them vipers? Even his cousin did. Mm -hmm. His cousin called the same group. The same thing he called them, hypocrites. Because in God's mind, he knows that the heart is not going to change. Mm -hmm. He knows it's not going to change. You know and I know that instruments have nothing to do with salvation. Right. Nothing. Nothing. Gifts don't have anything to do with salvation. They still had to be baptized. Mm -hmm. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. He died again. Matter of fact, the Pharisees want to kill him because he was raised from the dead. And they was the one that said, send us the sign. I gave you one. Here's Lazarus. Now you want to kill him. See, human beings don't, they don't, they're not, they can't get enough. Mm -hmm. They can't get enough. But I just want to, I just want to, I just want to stress this to you. So when it happens, we don't have to debate it. Because I know how Church of Christ members are when they start abandoning the truth. See, that's that shepherd stuff that they do. What you're going to do is this. And I'm going to warn you. I'm going to warn you. They're going to invite some of y'all over for dinner. And they're going to start talking about the content of the Sunday. They're going to start saying, I don't think it's not wrong. Maybe if you don't start hearing conversations like that over mashed potatoes and bread, why don't we do X, Y, Z? You don't want to go and start another church. You just want to let the devil interrupt the one that you're in. Not realizing that's exactly what he wants. Yes, See? Yes. When your brothers and sisters die to produce what you can sit here now and free to and listen to. Because that's how it's going to happen. That's how it's going to happen. Because some way, somehow, people get tired of the truth. We do. We get tired of the truth. And we want more of what we... They got a new thing out now called praise worship. Praise worship. And it's okay to praise God, because I know how God said praise Him. But don't bring the world into the praise. Don't bring the world into the praise, because now you abandon God's principles. It's easy mm -hmm. to do. And that's you, 2, 36 and beyond. They made it perfectly clear. All 11, Peter and 11 stood up and they... They preach the Old Testament to these people, and then they preach Jesus. And they made it perfectly clear that he who you crucified has both been Lord and Savior. And he died on the cross for your sin. And it's there. I mean, he, they, and they made it so clear. And every nation represented was there. Every nation. All the people, and devout people, the Bible said, were there. And, and you know, they kept going. And they taught him. And, you know, these people, they realized you know, when Jesus ascended, when he was dying on the cross, this got to be the Son of God. They realized they did a big uh -oh. And so they said, what shall we do to be saved? Out of all those people, praise be to God, though, but out of all those people that was represented here, 3,000 said, I want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of it. And Peter didn't tell him I mailed him in a lesson. He didn't tell him to put your hand on the camera. He didn't tell him any of those things that was existing at that time. He told them that they must be baptized for the remission of their sins. 
so they can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that went along for years. Yeah. Yeah. Until while men slept, some guy came along and said, just break them. <laughs> just pour them on your forehead. Yeah. While they're six weeks. Yeah. And while they were sleeping, other people said, hmm, that's a good idea. And then we had another form of salvation. And then a little later, we get around to the 1500s, and they start saying, hmm, that revival meeting. Tip me, because they used to hold it for weeks. And I think they wore the people out because it was hot. You see how I'm sweating now? People burning up. Now, you would think that water would be welcome to be. Only if you come down here and say a sinner's prayer. People said, hmm, that's something new. We do that. And now, denominationalism is born. You worship where you worship, you worship where I worship. And you don't think that's wrong with God? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't wrong then, and it's not wrong now. And the only thing you have to do is do what God asks you to do. And he will add you to the church. He will add you to his church. You're not joining it. He will add you to it. And then you will continue steadfastly in the doctrine and the breaking of bread. You will do this every first day of the week. You will read this and have this preached to you every first day of the week. And every time you have a problem or an issue, you will go to this. And this is a guarantee to get you to heaven. This is not going to hinder you from getting to heaven. This is a guarantee. If you do everything that God says to you, when you stand before, because we all must stand before the judgment seat of God. So when Christ comes and get to church and he brings the church back to God, God is going to show the world a judgment day. They did it. Mm -hmm. Look here. They did it. That's what Paul told the Corinthians. Your life is going to judge the world. Mm -hmm. They did it. And then it's going to be your moment with God. And remember, it's not going to be any time. It's going to be no time. We don't even know what that's going to look like. It's not going to be any time. Because remember, God is not going to be in a hurry on Judgment Day. He mm -hmm. got a lot of things to do. Right. He got to hear a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. And you got to convince him if he want to get in. And you see, can't you're not coming up through the window. You're not coming over one of the gates. None of that. You're going to stand before him. And he's going to do an REW in your life. He's going to pull an MGM on. Met Metro and Goldwyn Mayor. Because yeah. it's his will that all men be saved. All men. And if you seek him diligently, you will find him. And he's yeah. going to show you the first time you said no. Mm. Then he's going to show you the second time you said no. And then he's going to show you when he said no. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next thing you're going to hear is why I'm going to because now it's God's turn. Hmm. You had it all your life. Amen. After that, no. To repent and give your life to God. But you said no. Amen. Now God is going to say no. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. There are certain people you're not going to let down. Certain people you're not going to let down. Oh, Lord, Lord. You're not letting murderers and thieves and rapists and all people you're not. Not knowing. Not knowing. No. You're going to have some people in there that have done these things and you can tell it. But you're not letting those kind of people in your house. God is not going to let sin be in his house. Because sin is against his divine nature. That's all it is. That's all it is. And it's all in Acts chapter 2, starting with 36, 32, read on down to 47. And you'll get the story. I'll tell you what they said. And I just told you what God said. Now, there are some who are written in the midst of us today. And had a tough week in saying that this could do it. Praise be to God. The prayers of saints prevail as much. We can pray for you. Do not go another seven days to sin. Because God be calling you. Be calling you. You're not okay. perfect. On so let's look at it that way. Let's know that God is the reason that we are living. Don't let the devil steal your joy and keep you away from God. That's what you want. Just know that. Just know that. Something as simple as, Father, I'm sorry, and it's coming from the heart to stop God with his tracks. You remember Ahab, Jezebel's husband, he put on sackcloth for that? 
God said, wait a minute, I remember. And I'm so glad that's here. Because when I fall short of God's glory, I, I, I remember the story. God said, wait a minute. I remember. He got him later on because he kept after his student. Okay. And got his wife too. But God said, wait a minute. That stopped it. That stopped heaven when you say Father. Yeah. And it's coming from you. It moves the creator yeah. of the universe when he hears that coming from you. Yeah. Satan has to move out the way. Father, I'm sorry. Please forgive me and say. God said, say that again. What did he say? I'm sorry. The creator of the universe.